Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another monthly meal prep video if you're new around here I do these about every two weeks. So about twice a month It's just what works best for me to be able to put things in the freezer and have easy meals ready to go Also, if you're new I have all of the ingredients and instructions listed below in the description box You will also find links there where you can go and pin these recipes individually to your Pinterest board So you can keep them more organized and if you're trying to jump to one specific recipe in this video there are timestamps by each recipe if you aren't subscribed already I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and let's get cooking the first recipe we're starting off with today is some easy mini pizzas and I'll be honest I planned out this recipe I hadn't tried it out before I filmed this video but I just kind of had in mind what I thought I was going to be putting together and they ended up being so much better than I even anticipated my sister-in-law was over this day while I was cooking and even she was saying that they are so good she's like I'm never buying bagel bites or pizza pockets again because now this is such an easy way to make up pizza that tastes so much better so you just basically want to take some English muffins slice them in half and then you're gonna make a butter mixture so you have some butter some Italian seasoning and some garlic powder mix that together and then you want to brush that over the English muffins. After you have your English muffins coated well in butter, you want to take your pizza sauce and go ahead and douse them up with that. And as you guys know, if you watch my channel often, I have to shred my own cheese. I don't do pre-shredded cheese. So this was a block of mozzarella shredded up into fine shreds. And then just to make it a little extra fun, I did do some mini pepperonis. You could do regular, absolutely. And you could also do any toppings you want to for these. So after that, I just popped them in the oven. In the description, I will leave both the times that you want to do it if you're only partially baking them to put them in the freezer to finish baking them later when you're ready to eat them or if you're going to bake them all the way through to eat them right away. This recipe does make 12 mini pizzas. I want to thank Teldronics for sponsoring today's video. They offer this fabulous air fryer. If you guys have been around for a while, you know how much I appreciate using an air fryer. And it is one way to cook a little bit healthier because you use less fuel, you use 85% less fat than a deep fryer, but you get the same crunch and it just gives food such an amazing texture. The heat is distributed evenly through the air fryer and it always gives a great color to your food. It has a built-in fan and a 360 air convection system that can quickly circulate the hot air around the food to cook dishes. It has precise time settings and temperature control which I love particularly for different types of meats and proteins. It has 11 preset settings for different types of foods. It is definitely family sized, which I appreciate that I can get all of our food into one basket. It's got a very deep, large basket that you could put a whole chicken in. The basket on the inside, you can remove and put into your dishwasher. It's super nonstick, even with the things that I have made in it, I haven't had any issues cleaning it. Check out the links and the information in the description box to pick up your own 
air fryer. I highly recommend it and you guys know that you see a lot of recipes that can involve the air fryer here on my channel. All right, so the recipe that I'm making in the air fryer today is actually some healthy coconut shrimp. Um, this was something I have been wanting to try for a little while now and this was a great excuse to show you all how great this air fryer is. So you just need a little bit of coconut flour, some unsweetened coconut flakes, some eggs, a little bit of sweetener, all of the instructions and ingredients are listed below and it's super simple to make. I think for some reason I assumed this was going to be difficult but it was way easier than I imagined. So you could eat these right away when you pull them out of the the air fryer or since they're already fried up you could put them in a bag and throw them in the freezer and then just reheat them in the air fryer it would be a really simple lunch or even an appetizer if you're waiting on another meal I just think that this is something that I'm definitely gonna keep in my recipe book To go along with the shrimp, I decided to make a spicy, um, kind of Asian-inspired sauce. I know that some people, I think, call it boom boom sauce or something similar to that. So it just has some mayo, some sriracha, a little bit of sweetener, and then this chili um, sauce. I think that's what it's called, or chili paste of some kind. Just mix it up. If you're somebody that likes spicy, then you will definitely love dunking the shrimp in this. Also, this recipe does make a lot of this shrimp. It is two pounds of the really big shrimp. So even if you ate some after you made it, you definitely would have some for the freezer. The next recipe that I jumped right into was a broccoli chicken soup or broccoli cheddar chicken soup. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to call it, but you start out by cutting up about three chicken breasts. I actually had thawed out four and didn't realize it, so I went ahead and cut it up, but I probably would get away with three for this bowl of soup and I cut them into really small pieces. Next, I went ahead and used my Dutch oven and put some avocado oil in the bottom and fried up the chicken pieces. I put some salt and then a little bit of onion powder just to season it while it was cooking up. Next, you'll need some chicken broth or you can opt for some bone broth. That's what I'm using here. Um, I love this bone broth. I think I used it in my last meal prep as well. It's just a really quick way to make up broth when you need it for a soup. Plus, it's got way more health benefits than regular broth does and it tastes good in my opinion. So I'll leave the link for it below. It is from Amazon and this one does have some turmeric in it. So it added to the yellowy color of the cheddar soup. The next ingredient you'll need is some heavy cream. I actually got some coconut milk to try out for this. Um, you definitely do not need to do the coconut milk or go that extra step. You could use regular heavy cream, um, but I just like the fact that it adds a few more health benefits and for some reason for myself when it comes to milk and creams, I'm a little more sensitive to that than cheese, so that's why I decided to try this out. You know that every good recipe has butter in it somewhere. <laughs> okay, to get the cheesy, cheesy flavor, you gotta mix some mild and sharp cheddar. And again, with the shredding my own cheese, I had to shred up what I had going on for this. I just don't like the powder that they put on the store-bought shredded cheese. I feel like the cheese doesn't melt as well and it takes away from the flavor. Next, you wanna add in two bags of broccoli and cauliflower, some salt, pepper, 
And one other thing I wanted to mention about the broccoli and cauliflower is mine ended up being a little bit bigger in size than I wanted it to be. So I didn't film it, but I did end up running my immersion blender kind of through the soup just to help chop up the broccoli and cauliflower. But I'm sure you could get smaller chopped broccoli and cauliflower to dump right into this. After it simmers on the stove, all the cheese melts and the flavors combine, this is so delicious. I would say that this soup has a very savory note to it with the bone broth and the Worcestershire sauce in it. It was so delicious. So as I've shown you guys before, my ideal situation with soup is to put it in these little cups so that I can reheat it quickly for lunches or a quick dinner. The next recipe I dove into was some cherry cheesecake bites. These are pretty healthy, but I will give you some alternatives if you don't have special ingredients on hand. Like instead of the almond flour, you can use crushed up graham crackers. I'll leave it all in the description box so you guys have options. I like to do that so that anybody can make these or you may only have some of the ingredients on hand and you wanna make them right now, which I totally understand. I love watching cooking videos and then I'm in the mood to cook and I wanna do it now. So I did use the bottom of a little spice jar thing here to smash down the crust into the mini muffin pan. And I wanted to say this as well with this recipe. I think it depends on the actual size of your mini muffins. I feel like my pan is a little bit of a smaller mini muffin and um, it made more of these. It did make more like two pans for me, but depending on what size your pan is, it may depend on how many you end up with from this recipe. So I did use a sugar substitute. I'll leave the details below. And then I use these red tart cherries. I have never used these for anything before, but I saw them on my Walmart pickup like online, which I love that I'm seeing things that are at Walmart that I would have never noticed before just from doing Walmart pickup so often. So I went ahead and used them. They don't have any sugar added to them and they are delicious. My girls were eating them right out of the can. They were so good. So I had a little mishap in my week and my refrigerator broke the day that I was filming this. And so I wasn't able to finish up the last recipe I wanted to share, and that was making yogurt. I have shown you guys this in the past, but I've never written out the instructions and the ingredients in the description box. So here goes. I'm going to insert some footage from um, this past year that I took explaining how to make my yogurt because I get a request for this a lot on where is that video that you make your yogurt. So I'm going to insert that footage here. And if you guys are new here, I would love it if you subscribed and stuck around. And I hope that you enjoy this yogurt making. The last time I made yogurt in my pressure cooker, so many of you asked for like a more detailed, are you gonna help me? Okay, a more detailed uh, like description or instructions on how to do this. It's so easy. And I'm also gonna tell you kind of your alternate way to do it if you don't have a pressure cooker. So basically the first thing you need to do is heat the milk up to 180 degrees. So you will need um, something like this to tell you how hot it is, no matter if it's in your pressure cooker or on the stove top. So if you were doing it on the stove top in a big pot, you would just dump your milk in, get it going, um, and I'm gonna put the saute setting on my pressure cooker um, and get it up to 180 degrees. Careful, don't dump it. Dump it all the way in. Good job. Okay, now get the, the other one. Open the lid.
Okay, it's almost at 180 and I'm filling up a sink of ice water. I just pull it out of here and you wanna drop it down to 110 degrees. Whenever you are at this point and it's slowly dropping down to 110 degrees, you'll see that there's kind of what they call a skin that gets created on top and you can just remove it. After it drops to 110 degrees, you wanna immediately pull it out of the ice water because you don't want it to drop any further than that. And then you can put it back in your pressure cooker. I will tell you in a second how to do it if you're just doing it in a pot and not in a pressure cooker. Um, so I did that and then I actually hit my yogurt setting here and just hit on and then it pretty much does the rest. But one very important step that you need to do when you're making yogurt is you actually need yogurt from your last batch or you can buy yogurt if it's your first time around. You just wanna buy plain yogurt. So you need about a fourth cup of it and then I take and ladle out a little bit of the milk to kind of bring that yogurt to temperature. So we'll just put a little bit in a bowl here. Then you'll want to put the yogurt into the warm milk. And I just kind of stir it into the milk before I dump it back in. So basically, the, that yogurt has the cultures in it to culture the milk that you just cooked up. So it's like your little starter. So every time you make a batch, you wanna put aside about you know a fourth cup of yogurt just so that you have it for your next batch. You'll dump it back in here. It doesn't really matter if your pressure cooker is uh, vented or unvented. It doesn't matter if your vent is open or closed. I just put mine closed. And then you just let it sit the eight hours on the yogurt setting and when the eight hours is up, you will have an entire pressure cooker Full of yogurt. Now I'm going to tell you what to do if you don't have a pressure cooker. So you would put your pot in ice water once it hits 180 degrees just like we did with this and then you'll pull it out as soon as it hits 110 and then you put the lid on your kettle and wrap it in a bath towel. I know it sounds a little bit funny but wrap it in a bath towel and then you just stick it in your oven and that does a really good job. I've made it that way before but that does a really great job at keeping the temperature where it needs to be and then again let it sit for you know eight to ten hours and check it and you should have yogurt that is perfect so you would do the same thing with mixing in your yogurt starter if you were doing it in a kettle as well this kind of saves the whole mess of needing to wrap it up and keep it in um, a bath towel so it just keeps it the exact temperature it needs to be inside of here it's the next day and I just once the eight hours were up I actually didn't like it wasn't quite as thick as I wanted it to be so I left it go for another two hours in the pressure cooker you can kind of test it as you go but as you can see it's got a pretty good consistency my last batch was a little thicker than this but that's okay it can just be different every time so anyway so I will take out a little portion of this for my next batch and then um, here are the strawberries that were left from yesterday so I'm actually gonna throw those in this bowl and use my immersion blender and blend them up you could totally smash them up with a fork um, I just want them to be a little bit smoother and then I'm going to mix the yogurt in and then I'm gonna do my sweetener I think that it's better to mix the sweetener into the whole yogurt batch and then kind of taste as you go to see how much you want to add to it I 